All right, so yesterday there were three big trailers that came out. Transformers 7, The Rise of the Beasts, Indiana Jones 5, and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So instead of doing three different breakdown videos and thoughts videos, I want to do all of them in just one. And the thing is, too, y'all, I did that Mario reaction, and as expected, I'm not surprised, it got copyright claimed by Nintendo, and they're getting money on it. So instead of doing that, I'd rather just compile my thoughts into the one video and just go from there. So I think that's what we're going to do. I want to start off first by talking about Transformers Rise of the Beast. I never thought that we would ever get a situation where we have Beast Wars Transformers not only getting their own movie, live action, but actually interacting with the original characters from the previous Transformers films, like Optimus Prime. They're going to do Optimus Prime and Optimus Primal in the same film. And that's going to be a great moment for longtime Transformers fans. Let me tell you, Beast Wars and later on Beast Machines was a huge show back in the 90s when I was a kid. Massive. I would say that the first generation of Transformers hype kind of missed me by because I was born after. I got some of the toys. They were always around. Obviously, I saw the 86 movie when I was a kid. Not in theaters. I was too young for it, but later on, a home video. And uh, I, I, everybody knew. Like I saw reruns of the show, but I didn't catch it when it was first really big. But when Beast Wars came out, that was like, you know, the 90s Transformers. And interestingly enough, we live in an era now where CG is like the commonplace. I remember the Beast Wars show had really early 90s, really early 90s CG for cartoons. And it didn't look very good, especially in comparison to what it would become now. It did not look very good at all. And it's very hard on the eye, especially to watch it now because it's so, it's so experimental. Now, I commend it for being experimental, but I can understand why a lot of people nowadays would have a hard time watching it. But what made Beast Wars was the story and the characters and... It looks like they're going to be bringing over a lot of things from Beast Wars and kind of integrating it into Transformers Rise of the Beasts. For example, they're doing a thing, um, and again, I don't have spoilers for this film yet, um, so I can't even comment on what may or may not happen. I know that Michael Bay is no longer a lead producer on this. He's still credited because he starred the Transformers movies, you know, back in 2007, but... Um, it's not his thing, but this definitely has ties to the Predacons and Terracons and the Maximals. Like all these factions are going to be featured and that's really exciting. The trailer looks amazing. They're not focusing on the human characters that much, um, even though they'll be in it. Uh, I know that it has to do with like an exhibition, like a scientific exhibition or archaeological exhibition. And that's how they find the, um, the beasts. But it's interesting because... You know, the, the the final battle here, at least what's teasing the trailer, looks absolutely phenomenal. And I, when it comes to the Transformers movies, they've obviously been said to be schlock. Bumblebee is the one that actually had, like, the best story of them. But I actually like Transformers 1, and I like Transformers 3. It's 2 and 4 that I have a problem with, and 5. I remember I reviewed Transformers the last night. And it was one of the first videos I did about movies on this. I think it was on this channel. Yeah, it was on this channel that did like 50,000 views because I was so mad in that video because that movie was such trash. Like everybody says that Transformers 2 was the worst one, but I think 5 is the worst one. But now what they're trying to do is people like Stephen Capel Jr. are trying to course correct and give us some good Transformers stories. Problem is that's being run by Hasbro. And Hasbro, I'm not really too happy with Hasbro right now. The way they treated Transformers and Power Rangers, I'm not a fan. But, nonetheless, the movie looks great. Seeing Peter Cullen come back makes me happy. Bumblebee is back. I'm not surprised about that. Ron Perlman, Hellboy himself, is playing Optimus Primal. Perfect, yo. Deep voice. They're going to be able to go back and forth. Um, this looks like it's going to be an epic, epic movie. And if it's done more like Bumblebee, where the story is going to take the forefront, and they're going to sell toys either way, but if it's focused on the story, it's going to be quality. 
Next, I want to discuss Guardians of the... No, let's do Indiana Jones next. Indiana Jones uh, 5, uh, and it's called The Dial of Destiny. Indiana Jones and The Dial of Destiny. Harrison Ford is back. The film is directed by James Mangold. Just the fact that it's James Mangold directing it, I'm already happy. James Gam Mangold has one hell of a freaking resume when it comes to doing thought-provoking suspense thrillers and action films. And this is going to be right in that. It looks like this movie's going to have similar to a similar vibe to Force Awakens, where it's going to be like a big reunion. Hopefully, it'll be better than Force Awakens. Harrison Ford, Antonio Bandera, Phoebe Walker Bridge, Toby Jones are all in this movie. Harrison Ford reprising his role, and Mads Mickelson reprising his role as Indiana Jones for the fifth time. Look. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was a huge step down from the original trilogy. It's like the original trilogy movies are like 8s, 9s, and 10s, and that one's like a 6. I didn't think it was as bad as everybody said, but it definitely was a step down. Here, you know, it looks like they're going to go back to sort of indie being more vulnerable, especially being older, and I really, really dug the de-aging technology in the trailer. We knew they were going to do some flashbacks to young Indiana Jones and they were going to de-age Harrison Ford. But man, this de-aging stuff is getting so crazy. We're seeing it in so many different films. And we're seeing actors that we grew up with getting the fountain of youth, man. Have you all seen The Irishman? Have you seen that movie, yo, with Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and Robert De Niro? Looks like it was those three actors from like 1994 or not like 96 when he came out. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy and we see it here now kathy kennedy is the producer some folks don't like her and i get it but because it's james mangold and he's a co-writer as well this is the guy who did logan this is the guy who did 310 to yuma he's the guy who did copland he knows how to make adult contemporary movies this is going to be an adult movie with a childlike energy and the story looks pretty interesting and it's back to it's back to form again. It's back to Indiana Jones trying to find an artifact involving the Nazis again, the leftover Nazis, not the it ain't like how it was in, the, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And this is what it should be. Now, in my opinion, this is the last Indiana Jones that needs to come out, even if it makes a billion. They got to retire the character here. You're gonna make your money. Let. Harrison Ford play Indy one more time, but in my opinion, this needs to be it. I am so tired of things getting overly franchised, and this is already a franchise, and I feel like, honest to y'all, like, I think it's time that Indy hangs up his hat once and for all. And it's the first Indy film, in the, Indiana Jones film, that does not have Steven Spielberg directing and George Lucas writing, and that's weird, but I do trust who's doing it. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We saw Adam Warlock, yo. So if you saw the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which I did review here on the channel, a lot of fun, good stuff. Um, a good little like uh, slice of life story. And I kind of wish they'd do more of these. Like I, I really like that. I hope they do more stories where it's not necessarily like a super powerful villain they have to stop or any of that stuff. It's just a nice little story for like Disney Plus, not in the theater. This movie, though, we're back to form. Peter Quill is going to be facing off against some real enemies. Doesn't really go into who it is. Gamora is in the film. She's actually supposed to be the leader of the Ravagers now. So that's going to go to in a really interesting direction. You know, Drax in the trailer, Dave Bautista... And Mantis are both comedy. Again, I mean, the trailer's really funny. We have giant buff Groot, who's like the real Vin Diesel. Rocket, of course, is there. And then we have Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock will be in the movie. Yo, Will Poulter from the Chronicles of Nardia. Narnia? Did I say Nardia? Narnia. He is going to be playing Adam Warlock. And I guess the enemy is going to be the high priestess of the sovereign people or the, or the sovereign race. I don't know, but they are, they are the ones that appear to be built up as the antagonists. And here we go. This will be the last Guardians movie. It's sad, but it is what it is. But 
I'm hoping they go out with a bang. I'm expecting a lot of emotion because I think people are going to die without question. They may come back for Secret Wars, but they're gone. And I'm there. I'm there. I'll be there. You'll be there. We'll all be there. Sylvester Stallone is back in this movie. The trailer started off with comedy and then showed glimpses of the action pieces. And while nothing there looks to be as epic as the something in the first two films, I have a feeling that James Gunn, writer-director, is going to give us something epic in the last third of the film. I think it's going to have a huge, huge, huge finale. But I also think that they're not going to show it to us yet. We might see a little bit of it in the tra next trailer, but I think they're going to hold back on it because it's going to, I'm telling you, man, people are going to die. And then with this movie, I don't think it's going to suck because James Gunn does not want to go out on a whimper. He wants to leave Marvel with a bang so he can go assume his duties over in DC and help that universe out. And I really like this. I really like the fact that even Kevin Feige was like, you know what, I want to watch, I want to watch James Gunn's DC. It's an amicable split. He might come back to Marvel someday. He might even help produce the Secret Wars film if the Guardians are in that. You know, alternate universe Guardians. He may stop by for that. You know, people do that all the time. This idea of Marvel and DC being enemies, they are rivals, I'm sure. But I don't think it's a personal thing. I think it's more like, let's see who can tell the better stories. But I think fanboys rile up that rivalry a lot more than it actually needs to be riled up. And that's usually how it is, y'all. Sorry, I dropped something. That's usually how it is. Fanboys always make things worse. But at the same time, these are the fanboys that support the films. So you can't just ignore them. But I think the idea is, let's deliver some good stuff. And I don't think James Gunn is going to go out of Marvel and leave Marvel without delivering good stuff. Since, you know, Guardians 1 was a classic. Guardians 2 grew on me. I like Guardians 2 more recently than I did when I first saw it. That, did, that one did grow on me. And, uh... I love the Peacemaker and the Holiday Special. So this guy's on a roll, and I wish him the best. What did y'all think about these trailers? Let me know. We'll talk soon. Take care of yourself. And I got a real special Star Wars video coming out tomorrow.